Oh, big right hand turn. Let's keep the tub on the ground. Oh. I got my battery all charged up, and I am closing my mouth vent to keep down on noise. Waiting to you. Make a turn, and then I got one more turn, and I am in country roads, almost all the way home. So I'll just run this for as long as it goes and talk to you for as long as it does. Here's something I don't understand. If people enjoy smoking so much, why do they always hold their cigarette out the window like it's the nastiest thing in the world? I'm just confused. And maybe that's just because I'm not a smoker, so I don't get it. But, uh, yeah, I always see every time I pull up behind somebody and they got their arm sticking out of the window with a cigarette at the end of it, I'm like, well, if it's that unpleasant, don't do it. Ooh, look, it's a whole passel of bikes. Pretty. Sport bikes, too. As you can see, it's a gloomy kind of day here in central Virginia. Oh, big right-hand turn. Let's keep the tub on the ground. Oh, there we go. Big second gear right-hander without any ballast in the tub. That's a tough turn to make at high speed. Operating a sidecar, driving it, riding it, however you want to describe it, is sort of like riding a motorcycle and sort of not like riding a motorcycle. So, obviously, the main unit is a motorcycle. So, all the stop-and-go functions that you would do with your hands and your feet are all the same. The clutch is the same, the throttle's the same, the brakes are the same, the turn signals are the same. All those things are the same. And when you're going straight down the road, when you're going straight down the road, it's more or less the same, except that you don't have to use your core muscles to keep you perfectly balanced. When you start getting into the turns, that's when things get a little bit different. Because instead of having two axes and one track, you have three axes and two tracks. You are effectively a Y instead of an I, and that changes the whole dynamic. So first of all, from a fundamental level, when you accelerate a sidecar rig, the motorcycle accelerates faster than the sidecar. So the sidecar is lags behind. The motorcycle has to pull the sidecar up to speed. The other direction, when you're slowing down, if you do not have a brake on your sidecar wheel, then if you use the rear brake only, in that case, your sidecar is going to slow down slower than your motorcycle. Meaning that as the motorcycle decelerates, the sidecar decelerates at a slower rate than the, the motorcycle. Now, you can mitigate those things very easily. Number one, don't ever try to stop your sidecar rig with just the rear brake. Use the front brake on purpose, decisively, every time. And yet still, your sidecar will pull forward under normal stopping conditions. So you have to compensate for that, which just takes practice. Same thing for acceleration. You accelerate, it's going to pull to the right. You slow down, it's going to push to the left. My sidecar rig has a brake on the sidecar wheel that is tied into the brake on the rear brake on the motorcycle. So when I push down on the brake pedal, I get two wheels stopping in the back instead of just one wheel. And my brilliant and effective and intelligent personal mechanic, George from Gridlock Motors, has uh, increased my rear braking power by fixing a rear master cylinder from a K1300S, which is a very fast sport bike, and it's a larger capacity master cylinder with a bigger bore, so it pushes more fluid, which means I get more stopping power. Now, the other way that a sidecar is different from a regular motorcycle is when you turn. So when you turn a sidecar rig to the left, first of all, 
no matter which direction you turn, you can't use counter steering because you're on a two-track vehicle and two-track vehicles do not respond to counter steering. So you have to actually turn the whole front end to turn to the left. You have to turn the handlebars like you're wrestling the bike around in a parking lot. Now when you turn left, that drives the sidecar wheel into the ground. Gravity takes care of that for you. So a left turn on a sidecar rig is pretty stable. As long as your front tire has enough grip to handle the speed of your turn, you'll be fine. And if your front tire is a little low on grip based on conditions, speed, force, etc., then you get what I believe is called understeer. And that's when your front end wants to turn, but your rear end pushes your front end straight. It's a disconcerting feeling, certainly, to be turning your motorcycle, especially at, for example, full lock to the left, and you're not turning to the left at nearly the rate that you would like to be. So, provided your tires are in good condition and you are operating within your grip limits, move. left turns on a sidecar rig are pretty easy. Right turns, however, are sketchy almost all the time. Whether you have weight in the sidecar or not, and right now I do not, which makes them extra sketchy. So the way physics works then, and I'm not a scientist, I'm not a physician. A physician is a doctor, a physicist. I'm not a physicist, and I don't pretend to understand the science. But I do know how it feels on a sidecar. And when you turn the handlebars to the right, the sidecar unloads meaning it's working against gravity, it wants to come up in the air when you make a right turn. So the most effective way to counteract that is to, A, have weight in the sidecar, which I do not. B, to move your weight so that the center of gravity for the entire rig shifts to the right, which will then increase the perceived weight from a science standpoint, I suppose. Oh, that was a big bug. Of the sidecar, and therefore keeping the sidecar on the ground where you want it. It's beautiful out here, even with the gloomy sky. As long as no bugs have hit the camera lens, if that happens, well, you're out of luck. You're looking at bug guts. You should also probably shift your weight to the left when you're making a left turn, but it's not quite as critical because you're much less likely to flip the rig over in a left turn than in a right turn. So hopefully we'll get up into some turns here, some curves, instead of just going straight down this road, and I'll be able to show you what that looks like from the rider's seat. I anticipate that if and when that time comes, I will edit this whole big section out and just cut straight to that. So, maybe I'll talk to you later. Otherwise, we're just going to sit here and enjoy the ride. Have another look at my nice empty sidecar. I'm carrying a saw home so I can cut up a branch that my neighbor's tree dropped in my yard and he has neglected to take care of like he said he would because apparently, you know what, I don't want to get into it. Normally, I would stop at this gas station, I think it's a BP, not because they have great gas, but because they have great chicken. It's one of the only roadside places that I actually, oh, it's a sit-go now, and they got a nice covered outdoor place where you can sit and eat your lunch, but I don't need to eat lunch. i got dinner waiting for me at home. Well, I'll have to make it, but that's beside the point. One of the things you got to remember when you pass another vehicle with a sidecar rig is you got to get a lot farther over in the lane that you use to pass than you do on a regular motorcycle, which can add some time to your pass. Here we go. Can we pass them both? I believe we can.
And it's not so much about going faster than they're going. It's really about just not being behind them and being able to see farther up the road. Vans are difficult to see around. Oh, I can see the sun. Just a little bit of sun. Oh, it's glorious. And it's gone. Oh, well. It was nice while it lasted. So here comes a gentle right turn. I know this turn. And I'm going to slide my butt off the seat to the right and lean out over the right hand grip to make it easier for the bike to turn and maintain the speed I'm already going at. I don't have to slow down to keep the sidecar on the ground. For the left turn, I'll slide off the other side and do the same thing. And then when the road straightens out, I go back to the center of the seat. Now, this bike has fairing bits that I can press my knees against, which is convenient. They don't all have that to help me keep my balance and keep my position. Not all sidecar rigs are built on bikes like this. As a matter of fact, most aren't. I think when most people, many people think of a sidecar rig, they think of a Ural, which is incredibly utilitarian and cute and trendy and rugged. They don't really have a stellar reputation for quality control, but they are good rigs. You just got to know how to take care of them. And you have to ride them within their limits. This is really not that kind of rig. So this is really meant for touring, carting family members around in. I do the grocery shopping in it from time to time. Altogether, this bike and the side cart weighs probably close to 800 pounds. It's six feet wide at its widest point, 72 inches. And it is super, super stable, especially at high speed. The aerodynamics of the bike really help. And the sidecar could stand with a shorter windshield that was a little less uh, out there. But it's also pretty aerodynamic, too. So it's a really stable rig. And I can and have spent all day on it at highway speeds motoring through. Here's some three-wheelers. Can-Ams, they look like which of course is absolutely nothing like operating a sidecar rig, <laughs> even though they have three wheels. Here's a nice big sweeping right-hand turn. You can tell I'm pretty far out over the gap. And when you do that, you got to watch that white line on the side because you don't want to end up in the ditch crossing one of the fingers of Lake Anna another finger of Lake Anna, a little marina where people can put their boats in the water, go have fun. I've had this rig for probably close to 10 years now at this point, so I've got a good bit of experience. It's been, oh, I guess it's pushing 20,000 miles since I put the sidecar on there. It's not a high mileage vehicle. I don't use it a lot. But it's a lot of fun, and there's still things I learn every time I go out, even if I'm just going to the corner for gas or groceries or whatever. I rode it as far as Colorado, central Colorado, once upon a time, and uh, even crossing the windy plains of Kansas, it was a, a pretty awesome way to travel. Now here's a good example. you got a zigzag S-turn. So... We'll go off to the right, wave to that guy, and then off to the left for the sharp turn. You see we can hug the line pretty effectively. Come to a full and complete stop at this stop sign, which has blinking red lights. I don't know why. Maybe because people don't stop where they should. That was a complete stop, right? So Doug wants to know if I have seen the R18 yet. I will say road one this morning and include this photo.
So here's an opportunity for me to also give you a good look at the rig. I had the sidecar painted to match and had some repairs done to the bike at the same time. Turn signal, running light. I had to replace that uh, tail light. Looks like I need to recover the top. That's a, actually a tail light from a Harley Davidson. And the top of the light is clear so it shines up on the license plate. You see I got a car tire on the back because it doesn't have to lean. Take a moment to detox my hands. They're touching the pump. Oh, I touched my phone before I did that. Now I have to clean my phone when I get home. Let's see if I can get the sidecar up in the air for you. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera. Now oh, the road's crowned the wrong direction. I do it if I turn right. There we go. So, when you do that, it instantly becomes a motorcycle again, and counter-steering works, which if you're not really ready for it, can be pretty scary. Let me turn around here and I'll try it again. It does mean I have to kind of blow through this stop sign. I feel bad about that, I promise. There we go. Yeah. It's not super stable when it's doing that. It's not meant to do that. So here's a relatively sharp left turn. I will lean off and accelerate through the turn. Oh, 45. I should slow down. Oh, motorcycle. I don't know why they point at the ground. I've never understood that. They're not telling me to look out for something. That's why I would point at the ground. Some people don't bother to wave. That's cool. They don't have to. I don't care. I'm going to wave at them anyways. Baby cow. There's a baby cow. Chickens. I don't think they heard me. Oh, the sun is out now. I can see my shadow. That's a nice change of pace from the rest of the day. The sun is out now. I can feel it warming me up. It feels wonderful. We are the Folk Song Army. Every one of us cares against the fight against poverty, war, and injustice. Unlike the rest of you squares. Motorcycle. Another guy points at the ground. I don't get that. Motorcycle riders, why do you point at the ground? That's not a wave. That's barely even an acknowledgement of my existence. I mean, it's not like I'm out here giving you one of these. But you could acknowledge my presence with more than just pointing at the ground. Perhaps I'm overanalyzing the whole thing. Uh, sunshine really just lifts your mood. Ooh, another giant bug. Oh, the tune don't have to be clever. And it don't matter if you put a couple of extra syllables into a line. It sounds more ethnic if it ain't good English. And it don't even got a rhyme. Sorry. Rhyme. Anyway, I will stop singing. And you can then enjoy the rest of your life without ever having to listen to me sing again. One of my favorite things about sidecars, and I'm actually not doing it right now, but when you come to a complete stop, you don't have to put your feet down, which is really kind of cool when you think about it. You do that on a regular motorcycle and you will fall right over, but you do it on a sidecar and you just sit there. It has been wonderful talking to you. I would encourage you to like and subscribe and comment and do all the things that you do when you watch uh, the YouTube videos. So this is Wes, a.k.a. Motochiba, checking out.
signing off, however you want to call it. Be sure to check out my podcast. It's called Chasing the Horizon. It's all about the motorcycle industry. And head on over to the BMW Motorcycle Owners of America YouTube channel to see my less personalized videos, meaning, you know, less personalized for you, but still a lot of fun. I do tech videos and product unboxings and reviews and all sorts of fun stuff for the uh, BMW MOA. Take it easy. Take care of yourselves. Be healthy. Wash your hands. Ride safe. And I will see you out there somewhere on the road. Or off it, perhaps, depending on how things go. I did some gravel today for, you know, 600 feet.